Welcome back to part 3 of the series where we are covering the chapter radioactivity for O level physics. In this part we are going to be discussing the basic characteristics of alpha, beta and gamma radiations that come out of radioactive nuclei. So first of all we need to take a look at the nature of each of these. Now alpha radiations are basically particles that are made out of two protons and two neutrons. So they are made up of two protons and two neutrons and if you go through your periodic table uh, in your chemistry book you will find that there is an element by the name of helium whose nucleus also contains two protons and two neutrons. So sometimes we just call alpha particle a helium nucleus because they are basically identical. Now we have to be careful to not call it a helium atom. It's not a helium atom, it's just the nucleus of that atom if you are going to call it that. Why? Because alpha particles do not have electrons orbiting the two protons and two neutrons. It is just the nucleus part of the helium atom. Okay, now let's move on to beta radiation. Now in reality there is actually beta plus and beta minus radiations but in your syllabus it's only beta minus that will be covered and beta minus radiations is nothing but just an electron so beta radiation is also a particle just like alpha was a particle made up of two protons and two neutrons beta is also a particle and it's basically just one electron which has a negative charge on it moving on to gamma radiations well they are not particles they are actually waves and again you must remember them from your chapter of electromagnetic waves and if you remember the electromagnetic spectrum it had seven parts which included radio waves microwaves infrared rays, visible light waves uv rays x-rays and in the end it had gamma rays those gamma rays had the highest frequency the gamma rays had the highest frequency of them all so how would you describe the nature of gamma radiations well first of all they're not particles they are waves and what type of wave it's an electromagnetic wave and within that electromagnetic spectrum it has the highest frequency of all now x-rays and gamma rays are kind of similar in most cases we just refer to them as basically the same thing uh, they have similar uses they have similar effects on everything uh, and their values of wavelengths actually overlap but since they come out of different sources uh, that's why we have different names for them gamma radiations come out of radioactive nucleus whereas an x-ray come out of electrons being decelerated so that is why we have different names for them now let's move on to the symbols for each of these so how would you write down the symbol for an alpha particle well you can just make an alpha symbol so it's a greek letter and then write two at the bottom and four at the top so two tells you the number of protons it's the atomic number and four tells you the number of protons plus neutron which is the mass number so this is the nuclear notation that we have already covered in the nuclear atom chapter now because we already said that alpha particle can also be referred as a helium nucleus so we can also write down the symbol which is in the periodic table for the helium atom so we just write he for helium and then the same proton number and same mass number can be written for it now since alpha particle has two protons so it will have a, a relative charge of plus two now remember this is relative charge this is not charge in coulombs this is not being measured in the SI unit coulombs the actual value of charge is not plus two so this is just relative charge and by relative we means that we are comparing the charges of these particles with one another okay and this charge basically comes from two protons in the alpha particles because neutron neutrons do not have any charge now the relative mass of alpha particle will be 4 
because it has two protons and two neutrons we say that the relative mass of a proton is one and the relative mass of a neutron is one so since there are four of them inside alpha particle it has a mass of four now moving on to beta this will have a symbol of the Greek alphabet beta and then we'll write a minus one here and a zero here so zero basically says that its mass number is almost zero the actual mass of an electron or a beta particle is not actually zero but it's just close to zero compared to uh, alpha particle or compared to protons and neutrons the, el the electron is really really uh, light so we just don't consider its mass in the nuclear equations and this minus one actually signifies the charge on the beta particle or the electron and if you think about the two on the alpha particle or helium nucleus that can also represent the charge on the particle because it has two protons so it has a charge of plus two now beta particle or the electron has a charge of minus one since it's an electron so you can also write down the symbol as just an electron so e for an electron and then minus one and zero as its proton number and its mass or you could say its charge and its mass now gamma radiations has a symbol of the greek letter gamma and then the charge and mass both are zero because it's a wave it's not a particle so it does not have any charge and it does not have any mass <laughs> right so the relative charge on the beta particle is minus one the mass is close to zero gamma radiations are just waves so they have no charge and no mass moving on now we need to compare the ionizing effect of each of these radiations so to be very simple alpha is the strongest beta is weaker than them and then gamma is the weakest out of all of them so alpha is, will cause the most ionizations and now if you think about the reasons behind it let's just compare it alpha and beta why why does alpha have more ionizing effect why does it have more ionizing power than beta so first of all you can think of it this way it's heavy so it's more likely to bump into other particles to ionize them whereas beta is lighter so it's less likely to come in contact with them alpha has more charge while beta has less charge so alpha will obviously have more ability to remove the electron from a nearby atom also alpha travels slowly so it spends more time with each atom as it is passing through some material whereas beta is pretty fast when it comes out of the radioactive nucleus so it doesn't get much chance to spend time with those atoms in order to remove electrons from them let's talk about their penetrating power now so what can they pass through and what can be used to stop each of these radiations so alpha is the least penetrating beta is more penetrating than them and then gamma are the most penetrating out of all of them so you can see how the two things are the opposites of each other the more ionizing something is which is alpha the less penetrating it will be because as it ionizes the particles around it it loses energy alpha particle loses its energy really quickly therefore it has less penetration power whereas beta and gamma in this order have more penetrating power because they don't lose their energy as quickly they don't ionize as much particles as alpha so they don't interact that much with the surroundings and therefore they can travel much more now alpha particles can only travel a few centimeters in air and then it will just get absorbed lose all its energy uh, and in order to stop it you can use a sheet of paper or your skin is also good enough to stop alpha radiations so if alpha radiations are uh, Alpha, if alpha radiations are present in a room there is no other way for you uh, for them to get inside your body apart from you inhaling them through your mouth or your nose so if you breathe them in then obviously they go inside your body but otherwise your skin is good enough to stop them whereas on the other hand beta particles will penetrate your skin they will also penetrate the paper whereas they can be stopped by a few millimeter thick sheet of aluminium or some other metal now there is no way to completely stop the gamma radiations but 
with lead or very thick walls of concrete you can reduce most of its intensity so let's visualize what we have lear just learned alpha particles beta particles and gamma radiations all are going in the same direction you put a piece of paper alpha gets stopped right here beta just passes through gamma also passes through then we have a sheet of aluminium now beta radiations get stopped gamma still pass through and then if you have a thick piece of lead well gamma radiations have kind of been stopped this gamma radiation that you see here is of a lower intensity so a lot of it has been stopped but not completely stopped right continuing with these characteristics now we need to uh, understand how alpha beta and gamma radiations will behave in an electric field and then how will they behave in a magnetic field so if you want to understand the deflection of alpha beta and gamma radiations in an electric field it's pretty straightforward you just need to know the charge you just need to know the charge on each of them that's it so if you look at the next page I have an electric field here so on the top we have a positive plate and at the bottom we have a negatively charged plate now there is a radioactive source let's say all three radiations are part of the beam that comes out of the source now beta radiation has negative charge so it gets attracted towards the positive whereas alpha radiations are positively charged so they get attracted towards the negatively charged plate gamma radiations have no charge they are neutral so they are unaffected by electric fields now if you look at the magnetic field for this again you want to look at the charge and you must be able to use the Fleming's left hand rule the Fleming's left hand rule which you might have covered in the chapter of electromagnetism where you also studied the DC motor so you use the Fleming's left hand rule which has your thumb as the force on the particle the index finger as the direction in which the positive charge is traveling and uh, sorry the index finger determines the direction of the magnetic field and the middle finger shows the direction of conventional current or the uh, direction in which the positive charge is traveling so alpha particles are positively charged and we have a magnetic field in this area which is going into the page so if we use the left hand rule on alpha particles in this case we will find out that our thumb eventually points up if you point your if you use your left hand in the correct manner and you point your index finger into the page which is the direction of the magnetic field and you point your middle finger towards the right side which is the direction in which the positive alpha particles are traveling your thumb will point up so the force on the alpha particles is upwards that's why they deflect upwards on the other hand beta particles are negatively charged so whatever you did for alpha particles just do the opposite for beta you got the answer upwards for alpha so for the same magnetic field and for the same direction beta particle will go on the opposite side and then gamma because they have no charge they are also unaffected by magnetic fields now you might have noticed one thing in both these fields that beta radiations turn quite more than alpha radiations in fact this diagram actually over exaggerates the deflection of alpha particles they don't even deflect this much compared to beta so why is that because alpha radiations are heavy they are heavy and we have already studied this in earlier chapters that mass provides resistance to motion basically your acceleration is inversely proportional to mass so the heavier something is the harder it is to change its speed 
to speed it up, to slow it down and also to change direction. So it's harder to change the direction of alpha particles because they are much heavier. So that's it for this video and I'll see you in part 4.